Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I'm going to do a follow-up to another video I just did discussing multi-joint exercises, and we're going to talk about uh, single-joint exercises that we are doing purely for hypertrophy, uh, because that's what we do with supplemental lifts. The reason that we do supplemental lifts is not necessarily for what we would think of as direct carryover uh, to our bigger lifts. And again, I discussed last time a bigger lift and your, your primary lift is very relative to your training goals. But I'm going to assume that if you're coming to a strength channel, you do care about strength on some big movements, right? Otherwise, what are you doing here? So over to the point. With our smaller exercises in which we are trying to build muscle, we're doing these exercises for, for one purpose and one purpose only. To take usually our weaker links and to hypertrophy them maximally. Uh, because usually we have recovery limits for bigger exercises. Just like I'm doing those tricep extensions there. Um, the same week I did those, I was doing in the same workouts, closed grip pressing. Uh, I was doing weighted dips. But you can only handle so much of that stuff in one session. And in my case, because they don't work my triceps as hard as my pecs and delts, I have a recoverable volume left in my triceps. My triceps are also a weak link. And this exercise hits the triceps, at least one of the heads, more effectively than those other two exercises. So, you know, we're doing it to bring up that lagging muscle. Same thing with the, the laterals. You have those side raises, and I'm um, doing the same thing, right? Working on my side delts. But it works the entire delt and the trap. But we're working on a weak link with some extra volume because that muscle is not being hit near its maximum volume with the other big movements. It has recovery left. So we do smaller exercises for this reason or to work ahead of a muscle that isn't being worked. Now all of them you're going to see me do in this all work ahead of a muscle that most of your big movements do not. And that's why I'm doing them. But we're doing them for hypertrophy. And as I would point out a lot of times, if the side delt doesn't get worked that hard on rows and bench pressing, we may not get that much direct strength carryover by bringing it up. It'll, it could be a small amount. It could be a stability amount. Same thing with that long head on the, on the tricep being hit with the extension. It may not have as much direct carryover to the bench as the other two heads. But we are doing it just to get bigger and thicker. Or in some cases, injury prevention. It creates better stability, just like the side delt can create better stability in the overall shoulder girdle. The glued ham raises. Better reduce chances of tearing a hamstring on deadlifts if you build that third head that doesn't get worked on a hip hinge. So we're doing these things oftentimes for just size reasons, and in some cases, stability reasons, injury prevention reasons. Yeah, that, that's why we do these small exercises. And we don't need to train every muscle in the body with a single joint exercise. Right? At the time that I'm filming this, I only have three that I do. Right? Side delts, triceps, hamstrings. Well, and then some biceps. And we're not counting forearms. That's its own thing. So I don't do it with most of the muscles. It's not necessary. We, we hit our weakest links. Or things that we need for injury prevention and development purposes. So we come over to the question of how close should these be taken to failure? Um, generally all the way. Because the point I made before, when we're dealing with big exercises, there are recovery problems and in some cases risk of injury of taking them all the way to failure. Okay. You, taking a bench press or even a close grip bench press to absolute failure or we call it momentary failure, right? To where you fail, miss a rep every time. It's going to beat your recovery up. Or a way to dip, you might actually tear a pec or injure your shoulder. These tricep extensions, none of that's going to happen, right? Because watch, we come back and the long head gets a stretch and then we, we use the other two heads to help lift it, right? Very long head dominant on the eccentric. Well, on this, if you miss a rep, a lot of times what comes happens, you just can't raise it. It lowers and you can't come back up. You can just do a pullover and just take it right back down to your stomach and sit up. You don't even have to turn loose of it. Perfectly safe. You are not going to get injured by doing this exercise to failure. Right? I took it to failure right there. I couldn't complete that rep. I got to the bottom and couldn't lift it. That's failure. But we could still use the long head to do a pullover to bring it up. Interestingly enough, what happens if you do something like that? 
the long head might have had just a little bit of strength left, didn't it? So we used it for one more rep to do the pullover. The other two heads of the muscle couldn't complete their part. They were done. Same thing with the, the laterals. Something like this, you know, you can just come down and turn loose. There's, there's no real risk of injury on a lateral. So how do we determine how close we're getting to failure on some of these without failure? Because some of those are a misrep. That didn't go to a misrep on that one, right? So people would say, well, would you call that failure? Yeah. I call it failure because the long head was burning enough at that point that when you start to get a cramp in the muscle, a lot of times you know you can't complete another rep. Now, some of those you'll notice I go ahead and take it all the way. Uh, usually like the last set of an exercise like that, let's say I do five sets of it. I'll do it till it cramps a bit and then feel like I can't do one more or I'll rest, pause, I'll wait a second, try to do one more, then do it, then wait another second, do one more, if the little bit of cramp will go away. And then on maybe the very fifth set, you get to the very end, you just want to make absolutely sure you've completely fatigued all the available muscle fibers. I'll take it to failure. I'll try to do a rep that I can't do. Can't do it, you turn it loose. Right? Not a big deal. I believe this set was a fifth set. So you, you push it all the way up. And when you get there, it's like, okay, I can't do another rep. It just stopped. Okay, when you go to attempt a rep and you can't move the weight, the weight moves half an inch. Okay, that's failure. You, you can't do it. Now, the argument would be made of recovery oftentimes, right? Well, these are small exercises. We don't have a lot of recovery issues from them. In other words, if you attempt a rep and you miss reps on a bigger exercise, a multi-joint movement, it, it can definitely beat up your recovery. But right there, you look at that. It's a small exercise. My side delts gave out. There's no large systemic negative to that. It's not beating up my overall recovery. It's very, very localized because there's smaller exercises. So taking these exercises to failure instead of maybe coming within one rep of reserve most of the time, not a big deal. Not a big deal. Because we know the last rep usually produces the most muscle growth. Not all of it. People get caught up in these nuanced ideas that Stopping two reps short of failure doesn't cause growth. Well, every lab study ever done shows that it does, as long as total volume is sufficient. But rep per rep, that last rep does create the most growth. It's, it's a hair more than the one before it. So by taking these, you know, at least to, to momentary failure, pretty frequently, uh, we're going to make sure that we get growth. And because we're not as worried about overall recovery, it's not as much of an issue on these. Now, a lot of times, too, what else is failure? Is it missing a rep or is it when you have to start cheating? Well, if you have to start cheating, that's also failure because you're no longer strong enough to complete the reps with the strict form, with the form you were doing with the weight you were doing. So by cheating, it lets you act like you have a lighter weight. Well, you reached muscle failure. And you'll notice that on some of these glute ham raises. Some of them I stop at the bottom and pause, and then I kind of sling my body up against that band. So that's what we start looking for. And the same thing on an exercise like this. It has a lot of peak tension because I'm against a band and using a hamstring. You'll notice on some of them when I get to maybe the last rep, I don't quite get all the way up with it. I'm arching my back and everything else just trying to complete that rep, but I don't quite get there. That's failure. And when you're watching it, from the outside, it might be a very, very subtle difference. It can be a very subtle difference. But you know when you're cheating a rep up. You know when you're adjusting your form and form is breaking down so that you can try to squeeze out one more rep. Well, that's, that's also failure because you couldn't maintain strict form. It's really easy to see on something like a curl. But something like this is a little harder. See, right there, I didn't complete that last rep. It looked like I did from this angle, but I didn't quite get all the way up. My hamstring wasn't quite strong enough to pull against the peak tension of the band. The hamstring hit failure. It would be very nuanced. And a lot of times on a lift like this, you're going to feel a cramp sometimes when you hit that point too. The muscle just kind of gives up. Okay, the muscle will give up. So that's what we're looking for there. Is again, if we can't complete the exercise, the last rep. Even if it's just we missed the last inch of the lockout or we have to kind of cheat or sling or use momentum, right? that's muscle failure. We were no longer able to use strict form with the weight we were trying to use. 
the muscle is no longer able to recruit enough upper threshold fibers to finish the rep. So we had to cheat. And, and that's usually what we should be going for on these smaller exercises. Either momentary failure, a breakdown in form to complete reps, or you get there and you can't quite get the last couple of inches of a rep. That's it, we're done. And that will stimulate maximum growth from these, as long as there are exercises where it's safe to do it on. Um, and most smaller exercises are. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.